granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. And after this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. And so he died old and full of years. The story of Job is just one example of God's epic being told. The Bible is full and rich with the story. Do not read your Bible like an encyclopedia. Read it like a story. Read the books of the law as story. Read the books of wisdom and of song as story. Read the historical accounts of judges and kings and rulers and occupying enemies and battles as story. Read the Gospels as story. Read the letters of the blossoming church and the kingdom coming as story. And read the triumphant return of Jesus Christ through the revelation of John as a never-ending story. Every great story that has ever moved you to tears or great joy is telling you the true story. God's epic resounding in the imitation of the design of story. Next time we're going to explore some of these great stories that are imitated in the epic. You are here. This is what God says. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you'll call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord. For God knows your story. It's a story with the potential of a happy ending that never ends. It's a story that will not harm you. A story with great hope and adventure. You can go to the author anytime you wish and speak with him and he will hear you. You can seek him out and find him on every page of your story. The author will be found by you. I'd like to invite the musicians back to the platform, and I want to share with you a quote from Henry, uh, Frederick Beekner from his book, Telling the Truth, The Gospel as Tragedy, Comedy, and Fairy Tale. It is a world of magic and mystery, of deep darkness and flickering starlight. It is a world where terrible things happen and wonderful things too. It is a world where goodness is pitted against evil, love against hate, order against chaos, and a great struggle where often it is hard to be sure who belongs to which side because appearances are endlessly deceptive. Yet for all its confusion and wildness, it is a world where the battle goes ultimately to the good. Who live happily ever after. And where the long, where in the long run, everybody, good and evil alike, becomes known by his true name. That is the fairy tale of the gospel with, of course, one crucial difference from all other fairy tales. It is true. And it not only happened once upon a time, but has kept on happening ever since and is happening still. 